Hi everyone. Previously, I have discussed cardiac MR anatomy and imaging planes. Today, I am going to introduce cardiac MR pulse sequences and basic physics related to them. CMR sequences routinely used in clinical practice are ECG gated and require breath hold. Their names may appear different than the MRI sequences one may have learned in their residency days, but the basics behind the sequences remains the same. So, before we begin discussing the sequences, let us first recall the basics. There are two types of MR echoes that are acquired after an RF application. One is a spin echo, which is a signal that reappears after a 180 degree refocusing pulse. Another is a gradient echo, which is a signal that is refaced through switching of the gradient direction. Figures illustrate the same. A black blood spin echo is the first and the foremost acquisition in a CMR examination. Moving blood appears black due to the spin washout effect. Why is it so? Well, the blood in the image slice receives the 90 degree pulse, but when we apply the next 180 degree pulse, the blood moves out of the slice, fails to receive the refocusing pulse, which then causes the signal void. The black blood sequence or haste is used to understand cardiac and mediastinal anatomy and also to plan subsequent planes. The next sequence to be acquired is an SSFP sequence, a popular technique to ascertain the cardiac function. It is basically a GRE acquisition and can be done in two ways. The flash or SPGR sequence is a spoiled GRE sequence where the residual transverse magnetization is destroyed by using a spoiler gradient. The FFE is a sequence where the residual transverse magnetization is refocused. Now what is the balanced steady state free precision technique? When the residual transverse magnetization is refocused for a certain number of repetitions, the magnetization at some point in the sequence becomes constant which then yields a maximum signal in a short duration. This is the steady state sequence. Blood appears bright, which yields a good contrast to the dark myocardium. In a spoiled GRE, inflow enhancement plays a greater part to make the blood appear bright. In an SSFP sequence, the intrinsic contrast is due to the higher T2 by T1 ratio of blood as compared to the myocardium and the vessel walls. Spoiled GRE sequence can be used in certain situations where susceptibility artifacts can be extreme and hampers the image quality. For example, imaging on a 7 Tesla magnet or imaging patients with devices requires spoiled GRE sequence to avoid extreme susceptibility artifacts which can arise in an SSFP sequence. Now let me briefly introduce the remaining CMR sequences the first is a perfusion CMR sequence which is acquired to understand the first pass perfusion of gadolinium into the right, then the left-sided circulation and finally the perfusion of myocardium. Stress perfusion CMR is done to identify myocardial ischemia with an overall good accuracy as comparable to PET or SPECT. TI scout is a sequence used just before the late gadolinium enhancement imaging to find the inversion time and null the normal myocardium. This yields a better visualization of myocardial scar or fibrosis on a PSIR sequence. A PSIR or a face sensitive inversion recovery is acquired at 10 to 15 minutes after administration of gadolinium. It is available as a 2D segmented case space or a single shot acquisition and a 3D free breathing whole heart acquisition using navigator echoes which are placed on the dome of diaphragm to track its motion. Identification of the pattern of the scar or fibrosis enables distinction between the ischemic and non-ischemic pathology. Then the phase contrast sequence is used to accurately quantify blood flow and velocities. A single acquisition yields two sets of images. One is the phase image, another is the magnitude image. Then we have the advanced sequences. The T1 mapping is basically used to identify diffuse myocardial fibrosis. T2 mapping is used to identify myocardial edema. T2 star mapping is used to evaluate iron overload. Now, besides these sequences, there are research sequences being developed, such as quantitative susceptibility mapping. This is used to detect myocardial hemorrhage and can identify reperfusion injury post-stenting. Then, 
The LGE PSIR can be processed using pixel signal intensity algorithm to generate 3D maps, which are identical to the electronatomic voltage maps. Conducting channels can be identified on CMR to target sites of ventricular tachycardia and their RF ablation. Quite fascinating, right? Now coming to the question of the day. I have 2D and 3D LGE PSIR sequence of a same patient and you need to make a call if the patient has an ischemic or a non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. Do comment in the comment section below and I will reveal the answers in my next video. Thank you.